Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. Retrieval augmented generation, also known as RAG, is a popular technique to build more efficient chatbots. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a RAG chatbot using a combination of open source libraries and AWS services. So we'll use Langchain, Hugging Face, the Face library from Facebook, Amazon SageMaker, and Amazon Text Track. Okay, so quite a lot of toys to play with. Let's get to work. Before we jump in into the code, let's take a look at the typical chatbot architectures. The simplest one is really this one, where we start from a user query, uh, wrap it in a system prompt, send the query to a large language model, and generate an answer. Okay, and this is the good way to start. Um, there's nothing wrong with this. There are limitations, however. Obviously, knowledge only comes from the initial training process, which means that recent events are not taken into account, the so-called cutoff date problem. Domain and company knowledge could be too shallow um, because obviously the, the LLM wasn't trained on your internal company data. So there could be a problem there. Maybe if you ask deep domain questions, you're going to get shallow answers. And if you take the model out of domain, if again, if you ask deep domain questions and the LLM never really saw that kind of data during the training process, it's likely that uh, the model will hallucinate. Obviously, you could fine tune the LLM on your internal data to uh, mitigate those problems, but how often are you willing to run it? Uh, if you need very fresh answers, if you need to know what happened yesterday, uh, obviously, fine-tuning is not a great option because you don't want to fine-tune again and again and again every single day, right? So this is where retrieval augmented generation steps in, um, and we really uh, look at two different workflows here. So the first workflow is really an ingestion workflow where we start from internal documents, which could be text or images or anything, really, and we um, embed them uh, using an embedding model uh, which really means uh, we turn those documents or, or document chunks into high dimensional vectors, which we store in some kind of uh, database that will um, uh, let us query, right? And now the workflow looks something like this. We start from the user query, we embed the query itself, we run uh, um, vector proximity search or semantic search, um, against our embeddings database and we return the top five, top ten documents that are closely related to the query. And we wrap everything in a system prompt, which goes something like, hey, uh, has a helpful assistant, please answer the following query, blah, 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 uh, using context found in those documents, right? And then we generate the answer. And the two benefits here are obviously if we have fresh knowledge, right? Because the ingestion process could be running constantly in real time. Uh, if we have fresh knowledge and as soon as that knowledge is embedded and available in the, in the database, then it can be discovered and it can be um, added to the generation process. And the second benefit is uh, if we trust our search mechanism to, to work, then we're always bringing relevant context to the generation, meaning that if the query is taking the vanilla LLM out of domain, at least we're pointing it to relevant information to start generating a good answer instead of letting it you know, hallucinate and invent uh, stupid things. So that's what RAG is all about, and that's pretty much what we're going to build. Okay, so let's switch to the notebook and let's start running some code. So what are we building here? Uh, in a nutshell, we're going to build a chatbot that can retrieve information extracted from PDF files, okay? So we'll start from a few PDF files containing information about energy trends and, uh, and the energy market, right? Why not? Uh, domain specific documents. And we're gonna process those documents, embed them, uh, store the embeddings in a face, database and face is a, is a really nice library from Facebook. Uh, we'll talk about that later. And um, then we're going to deploy an LLM uh, on, uh, on SageMaker and we're going to query that LLM using 
uh, hopefully relevant context extracted from our embeddings. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. So let's get started, right? Let me zoom in maybe a bit. Okay, so obviously, first we need to install some dependencies, the SageMaker SDK, Langchain to orchestrate everything, uh, and a couple of additional packages for um, Amazon Text Tract and, uh, and PDF processing. Okay, uh, we need to import all those objects. We'll obviously see them again. Okay, um, the first step is to deploy our LLM. Okay, on uh, on a SageMaker endpoint. So as you can see here, I am deploying the uh, Mistral 7B model, and uh, this is a particular variant fine-tuned for instruction following. So th it's this particular model here. Okay. Again, all the links will be in the video description. Okay. So 7 billion parameter model. Um, not a lot to worry about. Um, we just need to keep an eye on the prompting format. Okay. But we'll get back to that. So deploying this model is super simple. Um, in fact, I didn't write any of this uh, code. I just decided to go here, click on deploy, SageMaker, and copy paste that code here, right? And that's all I did. So that's one of the reasons why you know, using SageMaker is a simple option because you can just copy paste and deploy, right? So we run this, uh, there's really nothing to uh, uh, to explain, I guess, right? Pointing at the model on the hub, using the built-in container for LLM inference on SageMaker, deploying on uh, a small G5 instance. This one has a single A10G GPU, so pretty small, not expensive, probably just uh, yeah, about a dollar an hour. So not an expensive instance by any means. Okay, we wait for a few minutes. And then we have our endpoint. Okay, and we just need to grab the endpoint a name because LangChain is going to need that. Okay, so now we have our endpoint running in SageMaker. Uh, the next step is to configure that same endpoint in LangChain, right? So if we want to, we can set some uh, model parameters here, such as the number of tokens to, to generate or the maximum number of tokens to generate and uh, top P and temperature, which uh, in a nutshell, control how creative you want the answer to be, uh, how exotic you want the vocabulary to be. Okay, uh, feel free to look up those parameters. We, we've met them before. Um, then we need to um, provide um, input and output transforms. Um, and these are really important um, because they will um, literally adapt the, the model input and the model output for length chain. Okay, so obviously JSON is going to be uh, our input format, and we need to define the prompt uh, format here, right? So we saw that thing on the model page. So the model wants to be prompted like that, right? And this is exactly what I've implemented here. Okay, so we'll have the prompt uh, and those. Uh, inst uh, markup tags here, okay, and the parameters. So that's it for the input. For the output, uh, we just decode the answer. Um, the, uh, the, the generated answer includes the instructions, um, which, you know, I found inconvenient um, for printing the result. So I'm just basically filtering um, everything that comes before that prompt close uh, tag here, okay? So we'll basically, we'll just see the generated answer. If you also want to see um, everything that came before, including the um, including the, the rag chunks, etc., uh, just return, just return the full response instead of uh, splitting here, okay? All right, so now we have our pre-processing and post-processing functions. Okay, and we can simply define our um, SageMaker endpoint as uh, a length chain LLM. Okay, so endpoint name, model parameters, 
content handler, which we just created. And we need a SageMaker client because this will bring uh, the AWS credentials, right? Uh, if, you, if you omit that, you're going to get some uh, permission errors. So we just need to know that we're allowed to invoke that endpoint. And that's how you do it. Okay. So before we go into RAG, we could try and ask uh, a basic question, right? We could run a, a zero shot example providing no context. So here's my system prompt. As a helpful energy specialist, please answer the question focus, focusing on numerical data. Don't invent facts. If you can't provide a factual answer, say you don't know what the answer is. Okay. Pretty reasonable. Um, so that's my prompt template, the system prompt, plus the actual query. Okay. So I define my length chain uh, chain, my LLM chain with the LLM and the prompt. Okay. And then I can ask a question. So my question is, we're in the energy domain, right? So what is the latest trend for solar investments in China? Okay. So that's my query. Uh, and if I run it, this is the answer that I get, right? According to a report by the International Energy Agency, China was the world's largest solar market in 2020. Okay, that's a few years ago. Um, the report also states that China's solar market is expected to grow. Na, na, na. However, the report doesn't provide specific information on the latest trend for solar investments in China. So not a terrible answer. Um, probably factually correct because I, I'm guessing the this document was in um, in the training set. However, um, it's a little bit outdated, right? There's nothing beyond 2020, and uh, the answer is actually quite honest about the fact that yeah, it's giving us this information, but it's not super specific, and it's definitely not about the latest trend. Okay, so again, not a horrible answer but we can certainly do better okay so this is where rag steps in so let's look at how we can add fresh context to the mix okay so uh, we have a few more objects here um if you already run the notebook uh you will have embedded the database and saved it uh, so you can load it again so that you don't have to reprocess everything but uh, obviously, if this is the first time you run this, the shortcut will not be available. So let's continue here. So as mentioned, I'll start from uh, those three uh, PDF files uh, coming from the International Energy Agency, right? So uh, you can use anything else. Uh, um, the, the code below is, uh, is generic. So if you use other PDF files, uh, just, uh, yeah, just go ahead. It, it'll, it'll run fine. Uh, so as mentioned before we're going to use we're going to extract information from those files using amazon text Tract, which is a, a, a managed service uh, these are big documents they're multi-page documents and uh, and they need to be in s3 okay so that's why i need an s3 bucket and prefix i'm copying my three pdf files to that bucket and prefix right and we can see them here Okay, again, you shouldn't need to change anything here unless you want to change the prefix, obviously. So now I've got my three files, uh, so I can easily build a list of S3 URIs. Okay, so I've got the full path to those three PDF files in S3. Okay, simple enough. Okay, so now I'm going to analyze those documents, meaning extract uh, the information. So these are complex documents, lots of tables, lots of graphs, uh, definitely not just text. Um, and so that's why I'm using text track because I just want to extract everything. And um, hopefully I can, I can use uh, as much information as possible. So, um, so text track is actually pretty simple and it is integrated with Langchain. So that's, that's good news. Um, we're going to need two uh, objects. We're going to need um, a text track client from AWS, and we're going to need um, a splitter, uh, as you can imagine, to split the extracted documents into chunks. So here, I decided to have rather small chunks, 256 bytes, without overlap, right? So uh, no overlapping chunks. But again, feel free to, to experiment with different values. 
Okay, and then I'm simply looping over my three URIs, um, loading uh, each document to text tract, receiving the, the extracted document. You can see how simple this is really. And then splitting each document into those 256 byte chunks, okay? And then uh, merging all the chunks. So you can see the first document was 137 pages, the second one was 181 pages, and the last one was 355 pages. So that's about, uh, yeah, seven, I would say 700 something pages, right? Um, and we have a little less than, I guess, 10,000 chunks, okay? And this took five minutes. Um, so I don't know, is that fast, is that slow? Uh, I don't know. I, I I didn't try to to optimize. It, it, it's simple and it's really all I wanted. And certainly fast enough for for my demo here, right? Okay, so now we have we have all those chunks. Um, and again, the chunks are just you know <clears throat> shorter bits of text uh, extracting from those documents. So the next step is to embed those chunks and store them in in our uh, backend. Okay, so um, what embedding model are we using, right? That, that's a question I get a lot. So we have built a leaderboard, okay, um, for embedding models. You're probably familiar with our LLM leaderboard, but there's also one for embedding models, right? And this is based on the massive text embedding benchmark, which is available in three languages and, and different tasks. Okay, so if you look at this, and I'm interested in English here, obviously, so we see we have, um, you know, we have the best models here, uh, lots of dimensions, but pretty large models, uh, 1.3 gigs. Um, so I actually went for this one, okay? So the smaller version, which is only 130 megabytes. So I guess just a bit bigger than maybe sentence transformers, which a lot of folks use out there. So it's got fewer dimensions, um, but and the, the benchmarks are still very good. And, um, and I felt, you know, this should be, uh, this should be fast enough and, and accurate enough for this demo, but feel free to experiment with bigger models. Obviously the bigger, the embedding model, um, the, the longer it takes to embed and the more, uh, storage you're going to require, right? Cause the embeddings are, are bigger, but anyway, um, so this is the, the leaderboard, it's a good place to start. So this is the model I'm using here, defining it uh, as an embeddings uh, model in Langchain. And then, well, simply creating a new face um, index, starting from all the chunks and embedding them with the embeddings model. And I love how simple this is. And if you look at the Langchain documentation, you will see uh, there are many options for uh, uh, for data stores, from you know very simple things to you know vector databases, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, again, feel free to experiment. But here for this demo, I think the the, the simplicity of uh, face is just uh, is just excellent, and it takes about six minutes uh, to to embed everything. So this is running. Uh, this notebook is running on AWS. It's a T3 instance. <laughs> so, uh, you know, CPU instance, very small one. Um, and uh, again, I guess six minutes is fine. Uh, you would get obviously better performance if you run this on, uh, I would say, bigger CPUs or maybe even GPU. But I wanted this demo to be economical. Okay. So six minutes later, we have our uh, face index. We can save it. Okay, so now we have the shortcut. And uh, now we are pretty much ready to query, right? So we'll configure our uh, face index as the retriever, okay? So as the source of truth. I've decided to fetch 10 documents, right? Um, they should fit in uh, in the context. Again, feel free to experiment with this. And now here's my template, okay? So I started from the same uh, prompt as before, as a helpful energy specialist, please answer the question. 
focusing on numerical data, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the question is here. And obviously, I'm injecting the context um, into the prompt. Okay, so the, the 10 chunks that are retrieved um, through Langchain are going to be available there. And, I, you know, I guess I really pointed the model as this. Hey, this is useful context to expand your built-in knowledge. Um, probably there are better ways to, to phrase it, but, you know, I thought I would insist on, hey, please use this stuff. Okay. All right. So I'm using this template to build the actual prompt. Okay. So the context and the question will obviously be injected when we run the query. Okay. The two input variables. So now I can build the, the chain. Okay. Uh, so I'm using a retrieval uh, QA chain type. Okay. Using the LLM. Um, I'm using the stuff policy, which is, okay, just grab 10 chunks. And, and and put them into the put them into the prompt. There are some uh, additional ways to do this. Uh, you can try to refine. You can try map reduce if you have tons of data um, and that won't fit into the context. But it, you know, I like to start simple and stuff is certainly the simplest way. Uh, the retriever, so the the face index, and obviously my prompt. Okay. So now asking my question again. Um, I get this answer, right? Um, so now the model is pretty definitive about the latest trend. Uh, you know, so it, it certainly found information in the index. It's giving us numbers for 2022. Um, and I feel this is just a better answer than the previous one feels, you know, I guess pointier, more, you know, more, uh, documented with more numbers etc etc uh, not too sure what that step steps thing here i'm not too sure what that steps thing means so why don't we ask right so what does steps mean and here we get a very good answer the step scenario is a scenario that provides a sense of the prevailing direction of energy system progression blah 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 okay so steps means stated policy scenario okay and, and here you can see i didn't I didn't provide any uh, context in the question. You know, obviously steps could mean a million things, but in the context of the extracted uh, information, right? Uh, this is energy related, obviously. And, and I get a very, very clear answer on what that is, right? Um, so pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Again, uh, feel free to ask all kinds of questions. Feel free to try um, other PDF files. Um, but as you can see, this is a really simple way to, to build this. Uh, once you're done, please don't forget to delete the model uh, and more importantly, the endpoint uh, to avoid unnecessary charges. Okay. So there you go. Um, this is really what I wanted to show you today. And um, I, I think it's pretty cool that we have everything in a single notebook, right? We have all the, all the main elements. Uh, we have the embeddings. Uh, the, the embedding model, we have the LLM, um, we have uh, document extraction, document embedding, document querying, and uh, you can see this is a very, you know, this is a, a very short notebook. There's really uh, not so much happening here. And, uh, and hopefully that's a good place to start your own experiments. Okay, again, all the links to everything, including the code in the video description. And uh, I guess I'll see you soon with more videos. If you have questions, please ask your questions. I'll try to, to answer as many as I can. And until next time, keep rocking.